And now I'm honored to bring up our great statesman. Um, I think Herb's been around for quite a few years, and with every year he just gets better and better, and he fights harder and harder for the people of Burlington County and, and the Seventh District. And he's been a friend and a colleague. And as Troy mentioned, you know he has championed health care and especially women's health care, when as the governor keeps cutting and cutting, Herb keeps pushing and fighting, and sometimes it's with no avail. But we do hear you, Herb, and we appreciate that. And I, I want to bring you up the patriarch of our party, Herb Connolly. I do wonder when I'm going to be called a patriarch again. I have been around a long time, but I'm not sure I'm up to patriarchhood just yet. It's nice to see these commercials on TV now about the governor. Now, uh, you know, talking about what's going on with women, talking about his uh, advocacy and support for those at the top, uh, that, uh, those commercials are going to have their impact and their bite. Because I don't care what you say, this is a democratic state and he knows it. And when the record is told, when the story is told of his stewardship of this state, of his constant striving to comfort the comforted, the comfortable, and his constant, I would say, attacks on workers, his constant attack on women, his constant everlasting attack on the environment, all those things that are important to those of us who think about the future, we're going to win this election. We're a democratic state with democratic values. I was looking at uh, uh, thinking about this dinner, uh, thinking about Thomas Jefferson. You know, uh, how did the Democratic Party get started? It got started because people like Thomas Jefferson said, you know, power is not just the purview of those at the top, those who are wealthy. Power belongs to the people. And everyone, no matter where you start, have a chance to, have, to make a difference in their society, to lead the way. And that's, that's how the Democratic Party got started. And he was the one who started pushing for the Bill of Rights. And think about the things that we... Uh, uh, that make us Americans today. Think about the blood that is all over the world in the ground of our bravest fighting for things like the Bill of Rights, the freedom of speech, the freedom to assemble, the freedom not to have the government come and take you out of your home, put you in jail, take your things from you without due process. Those are things that Thomas Jefferson, one of the founders of our party, put in place. And things that we, as Democrats, uh, I would say, have given uh, to this country. Think about uh, the sort of founding of the, of the Democratic Party with Jackson, the other person that we think about uh, at times like this. The same kind of thing. And what, what was the coalition that was put together making the Democratic Party? Farmers, uh, urban laborers, Irish immigrants, unpopular people at the time, but people who had a right to have a say about the direction of this country. That's what we fight for. That's the heart and soul of this Democratic Party. And that's why when you think about uh, Joanne, and you think about Amy, and their great and courageous run, those are the kinds of things that they have fought for. That's why they're sitting in office today. Their enthusiasm in advancing those values, is, and people said, yes, I agree with that. And they need to be in office, because we're tired of the same old nonsense from the other side, who every time there's a choice between what's good for everybody else and what's good for people at the top, they always make a choice for those people at the top. And I don't know if there are Republicans that are here, but I'm glad you're here. I don't know the Republicans of this thing, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, and I think you're here because you understand, uh, as I think a lot of Republicans are understanding, as they listen to this screed coming across this country over and over again. We don't like immigrants, get out. We want tax cuts for the wealthy. We don't, if you, if we don't care about your education in a public school. We don't care about the environment and the future. If you're a woman, we're going to tell you what to do with your life and your body. Over and over again, that's all we hear. It's all about cuts, 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 the hell with education, the hell with the middle class. Uh, people are tired of that. People understand what their agenda is and they're waking up. And, they're going to, and they understand that this governor that we have is, is right in there with the rest of that bunch in Washington who has done nothing but stand in the way of every progressive move our great president has tried to make, from health care to this problem with guns. I tell you, this gun issue, hey, look, I grew up, my, my father was a hunter. I had guns uh, on the wall in our den. I have respect for people who, who hunt. I don't, I'm not afraid of guns, but I'm not a fool. 
People in this country understand that guns have taken the lives of too many of our children, and we've seen with horrific effect what gun violence has meant to so many families across this country. And they know that common sense tells them, we've got to do something to stop that. Now, you can't do a background check at a gun show to stop these guns from getting in the hands of criminals that are then used to take an innocent life. When 90% of the people say that we have to do something about that and we can't get that done in Congress, something is wrong. Something's wrong with our democracy. And, and the fear that I have is when, when, when the government can't work to deliver to people what they say they want over and over again, I get concerned about the allegiance that people have to our government, about their faith in the democratic process. That's what's so insidiously wrong about what we're seeing going on in Washington today. When people say they want something and, they're, and, and, it's, and it's sensible. No one's taking away the Second Amendment from anybody. But to say that someone can't walk in uh, and buy 10 or 20 guns and travel to New York and travel uh, elsewhere and sell those guns on the street, sell those guns to people involved in the drug trade, and, and that kind of activity can't be stopped. Now, what we're going to do in the States, and this a bill, we're going to introduce this uh, very shortly. Uh, if you have a gun and you, and you transfer that gun to somebody else and that gun is used in a crime, you're going to go to jail just like the person who committed that crime. Now, if the federal government can't figure out how to stop this illegal transfer, this, 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 this trade in death, then at the state level, and that we ought to, we ought to take action to stop it. We should take action to stop it. And if we have a governor who is a law and order person, like he says, we ought to be able to get that stopped, at least here in New Jersey. And let's see what happens across the country as people see what a state can do when they decide that they're going to stop this, this terrible illegal trade. Now, we have a job to do, as, as has been said. We've got a great nominee. And she's going to go out there and carry uh, our values and our democratic message to people all across the state. Now, we've got to get rid of this person. I, people talk about, one, you never want to hear the word President Christie come out of your mouth. You never, you never want to have to say anything like that. The one thing we can do to ensure that we never have to say that is to stop him this year and this election and send him home. Get him out of trend. After that, I'm proud to stand with you and have stood with you over the years. And as we move forward into this next election, uh, we're going to advance those uh, values with a great uh, ticket at this freeholder board, and we're going to win. Thanks so much.